So far, we've tested Stephen Roche's Batalin, Le Mans Bilato, a Lotus 110, and Jan Ulrich's Armstrong scaring Valsa disguised as a giant. To find out which iconic vintage bike is faster than a modern day aero bike. So far, none have been, but what's next? This, which is what exactly? An aero road bike, so forward thinking that it was, wait for it, banned by the UCI. Yes, the sports governing body in their sweeping and tyrannical reforms laid out in the 96 Lugano Charter banned this so hard that few people have ever even seen or heard of this mythical beast. The giant MCR, the original mass-produced aero road bike. Without the UCI, is this what road bikes could or indeed should look like? A question we will answer shortly because the UCI has no jurisdiction here in Acton Turville. Turville, I think. Sorry. Turville, yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to ride it like we stole it and put it head to head against a modern UCI legal aero bike. Is this one going to be faster? And more to the point, should we all be thanking our lucky stars that the UCI did indeed ban this, this bike? Bike. But let's find out. For the record, we, ha we haven't actually stolen it. The owner, Stuart, is just over there. In our last video in this series, we looked at a bike that was raced as a giant, but wasn't actually made by a giant. Whereas today, we've got a bike that was genuinely made by a giant, but wasn't allowed to race. No, it does have a giant logo on the down tube though, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty big. Yeah. It's also quite unusual. More on that later. Uh, but first, the, the most, well, interesting thing about this bike is the frame, which was in its day totally radical. Totally radical. Now, to find out whether this was, is faster than a modern day aero bike, we have once again returned to GCN's Theatre of Dreams on the edge of the Cotswolds. Now, if you're not familiar with this part of England, it's a bleak plateau with a volatile climate on which a few brave souls managed to scratch a simple living from the earth. Like Jeremy Clarkson. It's a cruel testing ground for bikes and presenters alike. Nothing is harder or more punishing than the world famous B4040 from Acton Turville to Luckington and back, all 8.54 kilometres of it. Four people have ridden this segment. One of them took one hour and 15 minutes. So we think they probably stopped at the pub. Anyhow, we're gonna ride this bike as fast as we can. Sai's gonna go out first, and then by the magic of television and YouTube, I'm gonna tell you all about it while he's riding it. <laughs> Run number one then on the MCR. Now I've got Wahoo power meter pedals attached. The idea being to maintain a consistent power on both bikes so we can draw some kind of comparison between the two. Now, I gotta say, I feel like we finally made it. We've got an actual person on our imaginary start line to provide the beeps. So uh, Stuart, when you're ready, take it away. Beep, 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 beep. That was perfect. Oh. The bike is made from a whacking great carbon monocoque. None of it really resembles a tube. You've just got these massive deep sections everywhere. And the idea behind it was to take the undeniable performance benefits of the prohibitively expensive Lotus and bring that to the masses. So in 1997, you could get this bike for just 2,000 pounds or roughly $3,000 at the time which in today's money works out at £4,000. Not only is it an aero road bike, which in 1997 
was an alien concept. It has other features too, such as internal cable routing of a similar design to Cervelo's, which came nearly a decade later, and an integrated headset, which was for a mass market bike ahead of its time. It was actually designed by the legendary Mike Burroughs, the creative genius behind the Lotus bikes. But the design process was actually started by our official timekeeper today, Stuart, who uh, began it as an undergraduate project um, when he was a student. So we've actually got a full video over on the GCN Tech channel going through that story and the process and how this bike came to be. So make sure you check that out if you, uh, if you want to know more. It's pretty interesting. Another intriguing aspect to this bike was it was only produced in one size. The idea being not that it would only fit people who were 178 centimetres tall, but that actually it would fit everyone, which is bonkers really. And even more bonkers when you think that this was made in an era where steel and aluminium road bikes were made in one centimetre increments. Mike Burrows though, was a huge advocate of compact frames. He felt that longer seat posts were more aerodynamic and they were more comfortable. And then the stem that was on this bike was adjustable for height. So theoretically, everyone could fit on this bike. The reality is though, that the further you get away from that ideal medium size, whatever that is, the more compromises that you would make. So if you needed to fit a super short stem on, the handling would be mega twitchy. Whereas if you were really tall, and you had a really long stem, the handling would be more like sailing a ship. But it wasn't laziness that they only made one size. This was all about being cost efficient. So one size meant one carbon mold, also meant simplified production. And that, as you heard, was reflected in the price. Now, fortunately, I'm very much in the fit window of this bike, and I can tell you, therefore, how it was supposed to feel. And actually, it feels really good. But the handling, as always with bikes in the 90s, is completely bob on. It feels really good. There's a disconcerting clonk every time I go over a bump, but I think it's structurally sound. I think the main thing is that despite being a huge slab of carbon fibre, it's really flexy. So the front end, I don't know whether you can see that. Well, I think a lot of that comes from the stem actually, and the skinny little handlebar. Because under power, it feels all right at the bottom bracket, but maybe that's just because the handlebars are wafting side to side by a good few centimetres. It is comfy though, that's for sure. That's really taking me by surprise. Like really comfy. Is it aero? Well, we'll get an idea from our test runs, but I mean, it looks pretty aero, it looks pretty fast. Look how narrow the seat pin is front on. And well, the, the silhouette of it definitely resembles the triathlon Ironman world record setting Kadex bike that's been ridden by, um, what's his chops? Blumenfeld, that geezer. <laughs> this aero does come with a weight penalty though. It's 1,825 grams for the frame, which is around a kilo heavier than the frame on the Pinarello F that we're going to be riding against it. It's, yeah. Oh. Go on then, how is it? Well, it feels blooming nice to ride. It does, like, it's like a proper road bike and like with that old school racing geometry. So like a short back end, long in the front, big stem, big bars. But I'm not entirely sure it's that quick. <laughs> but I was having to think, so I think a lot of that might be down to these wheels, which I would imagine are as aerodynamic as a bus. And the tires. So should we swap them out? We can try. If we try to swap them out for your run, and see whether or not that makes a bit of a difference. I'm also intrigued, can we get the scales on it? You got the scales? I have a feeling you're gonna have needed to go to the gym. What? Yeah, two hands, it's a two-handed job. 9.6. 9.6? 9 
I don't know whether I'm surprised or not about that. I mean, that is quite a weighty road bike, isn't it? Yeah. That's a good two kilos heavier than, than the a Pirelli. normal road bike. Well, yeah, and a normal road bike of that era. Those wheels are not light. Didn't Matt Stevens win the national championships on these type of wheels? I think he might have done, yeah. <laughs> a bad workman always blames their tools, Si. That's right, right, yeah. Let's get the other wheels in then and, uh, and see what happens. Go on then, yeah, let's do it. If the front fits and the back doesn't, are you going to ride it with one deep section in? No. Look at that. The bike has just got 6k an hour faster, Ollie. Wouldn't you say? I think the wheels, the rims are a little bit wider, so the brakes are a bit more powerful now. All right, mate, you gonna go for it? Right, Stuart, if you, if you can do the honors, give me some beeps. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, <sighs> Position-wise, I feel quite a bit more stretched out than my bike. It's quite a bit longer and lower. Also, this classic same thing we see on all these old bikes. Wide handlebars. But it feels all right. I thought it was going to be really flexy. But actually, it's pretty good. It feels pretty slow. But then I was accidentally in the little ring. I was like... Why am I running out of gears? Oh, that'd be why. It's an important point though, it's like there's less feedback and the lever throw is not as good on all the gear systems. How was that? Yeah, all right, yeah, I mean, I was slow, but I was riding in at a lower power than I normally do okay. when we do these. I'm taking it easy today, feeling yeah. a bit tired. I don't, it don't feel that quick. No. Mm, that's my first in, that's my first impression yeah but we'll see it's uh, time for the Pinarello Pinarello time run two on the trusty Pinarello Stuart if you can do the honours beep 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 something that's instantly noticeable when you ride the same road back to back is that the modern bike is just so much smoother you know what proportion of that is down to the frame and what proportion is tire width I've got 28s on here it's, uh, it's impossible to tell but it's definitely significant riding with myself today it's aiming to hold 230 watts on both runs it's looking good so far All right, your turn. Yes. More bike riding. Let me have it. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, bloody hell, that's a big gear. You know, we talked about the wheels and swapping them out. But I also think a lot of the differences between these bikes are going to be other factors like modern tyres and Ollie's incredible high maintenance but performance effective waxing of chains, narrow handlebars. I feel like the odds are stacked against the MCR through no fault of its own really, just being older. I feel like that about a lot of things really personally but Ooh. Oh. You all right? Yes. Rather nice little bicycle you got there, mate. Yeah, I like it, yeah. Basically like a choice of chain loop. It's very efficient. Right. Should we get warmer and work out what's going on? As I say, let's crunch some numbers. Right then, should we address question number one first? Is this faster? What was your time, Ollie? So on the Giant, I did it in 
54. Okay. That's like 230 watts. I was, I was taking it easier this week. Um, but on the Pinarello, I did it in 14, 35. Oof. 19 seconds quicker. Not much. That's not much, is it? Not much at all. Well, so I was fractionally slower, or the margin of victory of the Pinarello was slightly bigger, all 26 right. seconds. I did it in like 14, so 12, much, and 13, something. No, it's not. And bear in mind, I had the slow wheels in as well. Well, it's just mind boggling when you think, uh, you know, what a bargain this bike was back in 97. It, 2,000 pounds, $3,000, right? Yeah. Well, and as I was riding along, I was thinking, well, you know, these wider handlebars, that's accounting for a bunch of watts. There's yeah. the fact that your wax chain is probably 89 watts more efficient at 200 <laughs> watts. So there are lots of like smaller things that add up on the Pinarello, which makes me wonder whether or not this frame design is actually faster. What do you think? Oh, it's, we'd have to like get it in a in a tunnel or something, or get someone to do some computational Tune fluid in dynamics. Tune to part two wind tunnel testing. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's well, it's intriguing, isn't it? I mean, you think well, the, the modern bike, the the modern Kdex tri bike, it, it does look remarkably sort of similar in in the shape, the silhouette. So, you know, and that's at the Ironman world record. So, well, there you go. So, food for thought. Potentially, this is actually on a similar kind of page to a modern aero bike. Does that mean then that bikes should look like this if it wasn't for the UCI? Well, <laughs> it's a big thing, isn't it? I think it's one we should ask the audience because, you know, I, I like the classic triangle shape of a bike. Yeah. But that is dictated to by the UCI informing bike design by their rules. Everyone wants to ride what the pros ride. But, but no one races, not really. Yeah, like maybe like 1% of people are actually under the jurisdiction of the UCI. Like the rest of us, we could all ride stuff like this if we wanted to. Yeah, and do you know what? I feel like increasingly there's a lot of cyclists that are looking for different, unique bikes. Yeah. And so I wonder whether the door is slightly open for a manufacturer to come in there and go, you know what? Rip up your rule books have a load of this, because that is nothing if not distinctive. Well, that's the thing, they only really do it, you only really see it with triathlon bikes at the moment. But yeah, like you say, a road bike, like a drop bar bike, that was totally illegal, but absolutely rapid. I mean, I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably go for it. Yeah, like, I mean, I can hear the marketing spiel now, <laughs> yeah. like the illegal road bike. Yeah, I'd go for it, yeah. yeah. For the record, I wouldn't be seen dead on a triathlon bike. No, absolutely not. Absolutely no. not. No, not even, not yet. Yeah. yeah. No, no. All right then, well, so conclusions. First of all, this is rapid in spite of it being 20 something years old. And both of us are open minded as to riding bikes like this on the road. Yeah, but let Just, us know your thoughts. Absolutely. Also, yeah. I'd actually like to let us know your thoughts on what that really weird white stain is on Ollie's bib tights. Because I've been looking at that all day and not wanting to, Don't worry not about wanting to think about it too much. I was waxing my chain. It's chain wax. Chain wax. Chain wax. It's a lovely thought. Uh, right, well, can we just say huge thanks to Stuart for the loan of his amazing MCR. As we mentioned earlier, head over to GCN Tech if you want the lowdown on how his university dissertation ended up as a bike like this. Go check it out. Do you want me to wax your chain for you? Nope.